Hello everyone, this is Suzanne at The Gospel Truth. Yes, we have changed our name. It was God Crochet and Chatter. We changed it to The Gospel Truth. As I've stated before, you don't have to do a thing. You don't have to resubscribe or anything. Um, it will now show up as The Gospel Truth at God Crochet and Chatter. Yes, at this um, time, we are studying the book of Revelation on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And we are going to uh, look at verses 2 and 3 and 4. So let's get started, shall we? I want to back up a little bit to verse 1, 4 verse 1 where it says, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Notice that the voice said, I will show you things which must take place after this. The word must should not be overlooked. It means the Old Testament prophecies, predictions of Jesus, and the words of all the sacred writers has to be fulfilled. What else can be said? God said he will do certain things and he has to keep his word. So don't ignore or dismiss the things written in the book of Revelation. These are things that must take place. Revelation 4 verse 2. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. John saw the door, heard the voice, and suddenly he was in the Spirit. In the Spirit means his Spirit left his body. It was changed by the Holy Spirit into a sort of spiritual rocket ship. His body could not enter heaven because it had not yet been glorified. However, his spirit could enter because of the righteousness of Christ and the cleansing or purifying of his sins. Can you imagine John looking up and behold, he's in the spirit and there's a throne set in heaven and one on the throne. Revelation 4 verse 3. And he who sat there was like jasper and a sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Now, I like that because emerald is my favorite color. I was born in May. It's my birthstone. And emerald is such a vibrant green. There was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. The one on the throne, Jesus, had the appearance of white and red light flashing of two precious stones, Jasper and Sardis. These are the first and last stones in the breastplate of the high priest. They remind us that the one on the throne is our high priest forever and ever. Jasper, the white flashing light, is opaque or translucent like a diamond and represents the purity or holiness of Jesus. Sardis, the flashing red light, is fiery red like the blood Jesus shed on the cross. This is all very symbolic. In the Old Testament, God promised Noah he would never destroy the earth with a flood again. He placed a rainbow in the sky as a reminder of that promise. When the church enters heaven, there will be a rainbow surrounding God's throne, promising he will not destroy the earth during the tribulation period. The rainbow is a reminder that God is a God of grace, a God who keeps his promises. Where Jesus had the appearance of Jasper and Sardis, the throne has the appearance of emerald green. Green is the color of life the eternal life that comes from God as a result of the shed blood of Jesus and the grace of God. Because human words cannot describe what John saw, 
He used symbols to help us understand. Notice how he used the following phrases to tell us everything about what he saw on the throne. Around the throne, from the throne, and before the throne. We will see these same things when the church is raptured into heaven. Verse 4, the 24 elders. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. On one occasion, the entire nation of Israel was represented by 24 special priests. Just as these priests represented all of Israel, the 24 elders one day represent all believers from Pentecost to the rapture. They will surround the throne of God as representatives of a nation of kings and priests. They will stand in for all overcomers. Just as these elders were dressed in white, in heaven we will all be clothed in white, representing the righteousness of Christ. We will wear golden crowns, rewards for our earthly deeds. These elders will stand in for all those who love the Lord. It is very important to note that the church will receive its robes and crowns, and it will begin its reign with Jesus in heaven before the tribulation period begins. There can be no doubt that God is showing us the pre-tribulation rapture. Wow. When it's broken down like this, it makes it easier to understand and how everything connects together. Well, on Monday, we're going to look at Revelation 4, verse 5. A storm is approaching. Storm is approaching. Sounds kind of scary, doesn't it? But as Christians, we don't have to be afraid. I know many people won't even look at the book of Revelation. It scares them to death. But knowledge is power. And we need to study to show ourselves approved unto God. And God has given us this wonderful picture in Revelation of how he's going to collect up his children, how in the end, there's going to be no more pain, no more suffering, and the final comeuppance of all those that are evil and bad, and it will now be time for them to pay. And it's been a long time in coming. A lot of people believe that we are in the last days. I know, I believe we, myself, I believe we are in the beginning of the last days. Yeah, it looks horrible. I think the next 10 years is even going to be more horrible if we can't turn things around. But we know that it has to get worse and worse and worse for the Lord to come. And I pray that my family will accept Christ, my friends. I pray that wherever I drop seeds, that they will take root. And I don't want anybody to perish. And it's a sad thing when our loved ones pass away and they did not know Christ. They didn't want nothing to do with the Bible or our friends. I have a very good friend from high school. And... She just told me one time, you know, you stay in the church. She said, but it's not for me. And I was thinking, what? Really? And she said, no, it's not for me. And as far as I know, she never did come back to the church. I haven't seen her in several years. I don't know. I pray that she did turn herself around and come back to the Lord. I know she ended up being very bitter in life. And that's sad. We, you know, we all have childhood friends. And sometimes if we reconnect with them through high school reunions, I've never gone to a high school reunion myself. But sometimes it's sad to see 
reconnect with some of your friends maybe over the years and see how horrible their life has turned out. And it all comes down to choices, doesn't it? Choices and consequences. And we must make good choices. We want to receive that crown of life. We want to be in the glorious heaven with Jesus. And it's, it's going to be just awesome. So as we continue our study, it's going to get more and more exciting. Um, tomorrow or Monday, I'm really anxious because we're also going to talk about the, um, the seven spirits. Yes, I'm talking about the seven spirits. I did some research and I found some interesting things to share with you. All right, that's it for our study today. Um, I did make a hat yesterday. This one's a little smaller. It's a little more snug on my head. This is more like maybe a child or somebody with a smaller head. But I whipped that out yesterday. I've got another one on my machine. And then, hold on one second. I'll be right back. I just got to grab a couple of things. Okay. Alrighty. Yesterday, I went to the Centers of Hope. It's in Pontiac, Michigan. It's about 20 minutes from here. My daughter works there, and she called me in the morning and said, Hey, Mom, we're having a half-off um, sale today. I guess it was National Thrift Store Day. And I don't know if all the thrift stores had 50% off, but the Centers of Hope did. And I found some yarn. They were, um, I think they were, I don't know if they were 99 cents. Here we go. Well, this one was $2.99, but it was half off, so I got it for $1.50. So, and here is just some, um, there's a green, that looks like nasty in there. I don't know what that is. Let's see. Let's open it up so we get a better look. So I got this. These are this is from a sweet roll. And I have some of these and it works up really nice. And this is some another little sweet roll. And then I got some green. And oh yeah well that's going in the garbage. That's got I'm gonna be using that one. But I got these and then, I love that sound. Okay, then I got this. I believe this is Red Heart yarn. This was 99 cents, and that's what I paid for it was 99 cents because they don't go half off on 99 cent items, which is fine. And then I got these two. I got these for 99 cents each. Look, excuse me, can't see. <laughs> okay, knock everything over. I got these two. This is Vanna, Vanna's Choice. This I heard works up really good in the knitting machines or crochet or knit. So this one, this will make a nice hat, maybe even a drop stitch scarf matching. So I got those two. And I got this. This was four dollars. I got it for two. Look at this emerald green. Put on that way. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Talk about. I know it doesn't show up in this picture, right? It's, it looks more like a teal, maybe. But this is a beautiful. I wonder if I. Anyway, it's a beautiful emerald green. I know it's not showing up like that in the picture because of the sunlight, but it is gorgeous. And I love emerald green. All right, put that in there. And then I got a couple more. I got this one for 99 cents. This is Red Heart Super Saver, and it's Wedgwood. Isn't that pretty? And then this one here... 
was 99 cents. This is um, Perfect Match Karen. I've never used this, but this is white. So, yeah. Um, my plan is to take some of my hats that I've made. Maybe take them to the Open Hope place and donate them. What this place does is they get donations, a ton of donations from everybody. And they, when they sell something, that all goes toward maintaining the building, you know, rent, whatever. But also, they feed people. Um, you can go once a week and stand in line, you register, and they give bread, milk, eggs, a couple pieces of meat, canned goods, fruits, veggies, and it's a wonderful thing they're doing. In fact, when my knee feels better, I'm going to volunteer, um, and I think I'd like to be a cashier and volunteer, and then maybe later on that might turn into actually getting a job there, but they do a good thing, and they spend like, it's over, I think it was like 152000 a year. No, not a year. I think they spend, it was a great amount. It was like $52,000 a month on groceries, or 152000 It's a huge amount. And they're feeding a lot of people. Pontiac is a poor area. And... I just love what they're doing and I'd like to kind of support that in a little bit by giving them some donations and um, that will help turn that into buying food for the people to give out and help pay for the expenses of the building. So anyway, um, that's what I did yesterday after I got done with a few things. Uh, today I have PT at 2 o'clock. It is my last day of PT. And um, I'm excited about this. Uh, then when I get home, or I might get stop and get a few groceries on the way and then on the way home. And then my husband and I will go out for a short walk. But I'm looking forward to um, continuing my exercises, continue walking, and now it's just a matter of healing. So everything's looking up. And uh, I'm feeling good about that. I do still have a lot of pain at night, but, you know, at least during the day, it's not quite so bad. So that's a win-win to me. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video, The Gospel Truth. And the Gospel Truth is, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one goes before the Father but through Him. And we need to remember the gospel truth. Write it on your hearts. All right, take care, and I'll be on tomorrow with a devotional on Saturday and probably on Sunday. So I hope that you are going to enjoy the rest of your day. I know I am, and I will be back on tomorrow.